Hi guys, and thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm back with a monthly favorites video and we're doing September favorites today. I know it's coming a little bit late, but you know, I don't like to upload when everybody else is uploading, so I thought I would wait a little bit down the month to upload my September favorites. But there's a few kind of beauty, skincare, a little bit of everything for this month. And there are a few things that I'm not quite sure of this September or October, but I think I'll include them in my next monthly favorites because I want to try them a little bit longer before I give you my my verdict on them but without further ado let's get straight into my September favorites but before that don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you already haven't I upload twice a week and I would love to have you back on the channel also don't forget to hit the little bell right next to the subscribe button so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video Okay, so we're gonna start everything off with a skincare and I don't usually change up my skincare routine that much to be honest but I have tried something that has really, really wowed me. And it is this product from La Roche-Posay. I love La Roche-Posay cleansers, and as you probably know, if you haven't watched my skincare routine, I will link that on the video now. But I really, really love their cream cleanser, and that's what I use to remove my makeup. But recently, I have been breaking out a lot. I've been getting a lot of acne. You can probably see it now. I've been broken out around here a little bit, and my skin has just been looking quite awful, to be honest, and I thought I would go and get something that was gonna clean a little bit deeper than my cream cleanser. I recently spoke to my dermatologist and she recommended that I use something that would do a little bit of a deeper cleanse than just a cream cleanser. I was basically doing a double cleanse with my cream cleanser and then I was using a wipe as well. So what I do now is I use my cream cleanser, then I'm using this gel cleanser after using my wipe in the middle, and I'm using this one with my Clarisonic. And I absolutely love how much it's cleared up my skin. I mean, I still have a little bit of remaining breakouts, but my skin is looking so much better. This basically is not a soap cleanser, which is what I was using before I stopped using all kind of foaming cleansers because my dermatologist said that soap cleansers were actually making me break out more because they were really drying up my skin and that was actually creating more oil to kind of replace all the oil that had been taken out and that is where actually I was ending up breaking a lot more. So um, I decided to go kind of cleanser free and just use a cream cleanser, no soaps, no foaming cleansers, nothing. But recently I decided to give this one a go and this one is basically from the Effaclar range from La Roche-Posay and it is a gel mousse um, cleanser. It now actually says here in English, purifying foaming gel for oily and sensitive skin. And it says it is a um, no alcohol, no soap, no colorant and no parabens. So it's actually kind of everything free and you'll, it comes out as a clear gel and you're basically meant to kind of put this onto your skin and then just rub it in. And what I do is instead of rubbing it in with my fingers, I rub it in with my damp Clarisonic. And it doesn't really foam up. I mean, it does get a little bit kind of whitish and creamy-ish, but it doesn't really foam up that much. And then I just kind of rinse off with water and just pat dry my skin. So in the first couple of days of using this, my breakouts had completely dried out and I could literally see my skin had made a huge difference. So I really, really have been loving this and you have acne, oily prone skin. I would definitely recommend this over any foam cleansers. I do still like my cream cleanser to kind of take my makeup off and really kind of rub into my eyes because I avoid my eye area with this one, although you can use it, but I prefer to avoid it because I don't, my eyes are very sensitive and I don't want them to sting or anything. But honestly, this one is an amazing cleanser and I would definitely recommend it if you have acne prone skin. So my next product is this one by Sunday Riley and it is the Satin Sulfur Acne Treatment Mask. And again, it's another skincare product. And I'd never tried skincare product from Sunday Riley, although I'd had amazing things about this brand. And I know her Luna oil was like an absolute outrage, but I never actually tried it. But like I said, I was having really troublesome skin. I was really struggling. It wasn't looking its best. And this acne mask, I had read reviews about it and I had heard it was absolutely amazing. So I decided to give it a go. I actually couldn't get my hands on this here in the UK, so I had to order it from the US, from Sephora, and the shipping charges absolutely costed a bomb. 
but I have to say the mask was absolutely worth it. It is a really, really good mask. It comes out like a kind of hybrid between a gel and a cream mask. Um, it's quite light textured. It's really green, um, which is not the best look, um, but you're meant to put it all over your face or you can use it as a spot treatment overnight. I actually applied it all over my face. You need to leave it on for about 15, 20 minutes and it's meant to kind of dry out your breakouts. And I have to say it definitely did make a difference, but I also really liked it because it didn't dry out my skin completely and the areas which didn't have breakouts weren't completely kind of stripped and peeling off after I'd used the mask, which I really liked. I have to say it didn't dry out my breakouts completely, but then again, I haven't used it as a spot treatment overnight and it might make a bigger difference if I use it like that, but I still really liked it. It made a huge difference and my skin looked kind of clearer. My spots had dried out a little bit and yeah, I really, really like it. The only gripe I have with it is it has a very strong kind of minty medicinal smell. So if you don't like strongly scented products, you're not gonna like this one. But I think that it's a very comfortable mask. It doesn't kind of dry out your skin and it had really good results. So I think it's worth it, although the scent is definitely not the most pleasant. Finally, for kind of skincare products, I have this oil from Brow Bar, and I actually got this when I went to get my brows threaded for the first time, which I have to say was all an experience. I had never had my eyebrows threaded, and I absolutely loved it. I think it made them look really defined, really clear. I went to the Blink Brow Bar in Harvey Nichols, and the lady who did my brows did a really good job. I don't have a lot of hair on my brows, so it was really difficult for her to shape them because they're naturally very thin and quite sparse, and especially around Around here I have no hair and around here as well they kind of start very kind of inside so it's really difficult to kind of shape them but she recommended that I started using this brow oil um, every night and it comes really nicely in like a roll-on and it's very easy to kind of just roll it onto your hairs I really like that and I really like that it's so easy to apply and I have absolutely have to say it has made a difference to my brows. I can definitely see kind of small hairs growing around here and around here since I've been using it and I've been using it for maybe four weeks now and I can definitely tell that it's made a difference. Um, it doesn't feel kind of sticky or anything, you just kind of roll it onto your brows. They do feel a little bit kind of oily but I just put it on before I go to bed and it's fine. It hasn't stained my sheets or anything and it definitely has made a difference. My brows feel thicker, new little hairs like I said are starting to grow out so I'm hoping I will have beautiful luscious full brows very soon. Finally, for body products, I wanted to share with you this sponge, which is a Japanese sponge, which is meant to be exfoliating, but it really leaves your skin feeling amazing. So it's from a Spanish brand called Better, and you can get it in like pharmacies in Spain. I will try to see if you can get it online somewhere below and I'll try to link it. I got it when I was out in Spain. But basically, it's like a Japanese sponge. It's some special product that they use in Japan. Um, I think it's made from like vegetable fibers. It says here, it's a plant called Konjac. Um, and it's a plant from Asia and honestly it feels really really nice it feels really soft and really kind of spongy um, it comes in the packet and it's actually moist in the packaging um, but then when you leave it out it sort of dries out and becomes sort of hard like a rock but then when you wet it it kind of expands and becomes really really soft and you just use it all over your body and it kind of does a very gentle exfoliation you can't feel it um, you just feel it like it's a normal sponge, but when you touch your skin afterwards, it's honestly so, so soft. They actually sell one for the face as well, which does a very gentle exfoliation. I didn't get this one this time, but I think I might get my hands on that one next time because honestly, the skin on my body feels so soft after using this that I definitely want to try the one on my face because apparently it also helps to clear out blackheads and stuff. So I think it would maybe be a great thing for me because I have a lot of brackheads, so I'm really, really looking forward to trying that out. But for the moment, this one on the body feels absolutely amazing. It is quite small though, so it does take quite a while to kind of rub it all over your body, but it is really, really good and it leaves my skin feeling amazing. And it's pretty cheap. I think it's only like five or six euros. So I'll definitely try and find a link to show you below. Um, so you can get your hands on it here in the UK. Moving on to makeup now, guys. Uh, my first monthly favorite is this Chanel shadow. I featured this in my Fenty Beauty kind of first impressions video. If you haven't seen that one, I will link it on the screen now so that you can see it in action. But basically, it is an amazing, amazing cream shadow. I really love it. It's got like a really beautiful kind of cream to powder texture. The pigmentation is great. It has like a kind of topi beigey color 
um, but with a little bit of a sheen to it. It looks really natural. It has like a little bit of a peachy undertone, so I think it's very flattering on the skin. I love to just blend it out with fingers and use it as a base for other eyeshadows on top, especially powder eyeshadows, because it just makes them blend really beautifully. But I also really like it if I'm going for a really natural eye look and you can literally just blend it out with fingers. But it also comes with a really, really nice applicator um, from Chanel, which is really good if you're just going to apply this by itself. Just kind of blend it out and that's it. I really like to mix it as well with my cream shadow from Dior. Um, I think it's the Meteor shadow. Um, and together they look really good. That one kind of intensifies the crease a little bit and this one as a kind of base for the highlight under the um, brow bone and also around the kind of main part of the lid. It looks absolutely amazing and yeah, it's just got a really beautiful texture. It doesn't crease at all, super long lasting. This one is in the color Undertone 802 and it's from their Ombre Premier range. Um, and yeah, it's just really good. I really like the cream shadows from Chanel and Dior. Both of them are really, really good. They have kind of similar textures. Um, this one feels a little harder, like a little less creamy, um, but it still kind of has really, really good color payoff and lasts very well and really kind of sets without drying your skin though. It doesn't kind of crease and dry your skin, but it sets really beautifully and lasts the whole day. Staying on the topic of eyeshadows, I have a really unexpected product this month and they are these MAC eyeshadows. I actually made this little MAC eyeshadow quad when I went into MAC a few weeks ago. And basically I already had this gray eyeshadow from them, but I bought these three ones. This one is Cork, this one is Kid, and this one is Malt, I think. Um, but I will link them all in the description box below. Um, but basically, I was never a huge fan of MAC eyeshadows. I thought they were really difficult to blend. And yeah, I had this gray one and I didn't have the best impressions of it. But I decided to give them a go again because I really wanted to get my hands on cork because I really liked it as a crease shade. And I have to say that I was kind of surprised that they actually did blend better than I thought they did. They are definitely not an Urban Decay or a Charlotte Tilbury. The color payoff is good. Um, they don't have a lot of fallout, but they are a little bit harder to blend and not as buttery as the Charlotte Tilbury shadows. But actually they are much better than I thought. And although you do have to work them a little bit more, they are still really nice. And obviously they have a huge color selection. These ones are all matte shades and I really love cork for my crease. I've been using it nonstop. It's kind of a really kind of cool toned nude. Um, not kind of peachy, more on the kind of grayish undertone, but still very neutral and really nice for your crease with a little bit of a warm hint, which looks really flattering. Kid is really nice because it is really kind of neutral, um, doesn't look too kind of beige or too pink. It's a very, very neutral shade. Um, and I really like it, especially on the lid or even as a highlight. And Malt, which I think is the more kind of, I think that's the name, but I will check definitely. It's more of a taupey, purpley, mauvey shade. And I really have been loving these shades. I like them as a crease shade, also as a lid shade. I definitely wouldn't use it as a kind of smoking shade because it's not dark enough for my skin tone. Maybe if you're kind of paler than me, it could work. Um, but for me, it's more of a kind of main color on the lid um, or even as a crease shade. Um, but it is really beautiful, really flattering. I think these kind of mauvey, taupey shades really flatter kind of olive skin tones. And yeah, I've been pleasantly surprised by my Kai shadows and I've been using these quite a lot. Next up on makeup is my Fenty foundation. I have been using this for a while now and I have to say I really love it. I have a first impressions video so I will link that on the screen now if you haven't watched it of all the products I got from the Fenty Beauty range. But basically for me the foundation I have to say was the real highlight of the whole range. I really love it. A lot of people have said it's really really matte. I don't find it looks that kind of matte on my skin. It's a soft matte. It definitely has a matte finish but I still feel like it doesn't make my skin look dull. It still looks alive and you can still see my skin through it. It's a kind of medium to full coverage. I would say it goes in as medium. If you build it up or if you put a lot, then it definitely can be full coverage. But for me, I like it as a medium. I spread it out with my Zoeva buffer brush and then kind of go over it with a beauty blender. And I think it looks really natural, kind of matte. It's great for filming. It's the foundation I have on now. Um, and yeah, I really like it. I think it's a nice soft matte finish, which is great for evening, very long lasting, but at the same time, 
time it doesn't kind of make your skin look completely flat so I really like it obviously the range has been famous because it has 40 shades of foundation which is so nice and kind of there's something for everyone I think this one matches my skin absolutely perfectly it has sort of a yellow undertone but it's not very yellow it does have some peach hints to it so I really like that because it doesn't make my skin look more yellow than it actually is it sort of brings it back onto the more rosy side but it still matches my skin really really well you can see like down my neck it just kind of matches really beautifully and yeah i really like it i think i don't like it as a full coverage foundation i like it more as a medium coverage but like i said it's definitely buildable it stays on all day doesn't crease stays quite matte and yeah very long lasting really easy to blend out and i think for the price point it's definitely a really really good quality foundation i also think it works well because it doesn't dry me out i have completely combination skin i'm quite patchy and sort of flaky around here but very oily down my t-zone and it doesn't look kind of dry and flaky around here it doesn't kind of cling onto my dry patches it looks very natural um, so yeah, I really think this is an absolute standout product and I would definitely recommend it Go and check out the shade range and I think there's definitely something for everyone from the palest to the deepest skin tones Finally for makeup. I have this Fenty powder which is her setting powder and I absolutely love this product. I think it is a super finely milled powder. It looks so natural on the skin. It doesn't cake up. You can reapply it a few times during the day although with a foundation I have to say I don't need to reapply a lot, maybe once or twice maximum during the day, but her foundation is quite matte. But if you're using a more glowy foundation, I think you can definitely keep reapplying during the day and it doesn't look cakey. It's so finely milled, completely translucent, looks really natural on the skin tone. It's not brightening, but at the same time, it doesn't have a color to it. So you can definitely apply it over foundation a few times and it won't look kind of weird or kind of make your foundation darker or lighter. And yeah, I really like it. I'm not a huge fan of the packaging. I think it looks a little bit cheap and also it's a little bit chunky So I don't think it's the best to carry in your handbag But I have to say the powder is really really good quality moving on to fashion favorites now I have this little pendant from accessorize that I recently got it's from their new kind of gold a little bit kind of better quality range And I absolutely love it. It's so dainty the chain as you can see is so kind of thin um, it looks super dainty and then it has this little um, acorn pendant which has these small little Swarovski crystals around the top but it's very kind of dainty, looks really beautiful with kind of jumpers or I really like it as well if you are kind of showing your decollete area. I think it looks really beautiful, really dainty, very sophisticated um, and the quality is actually quite nice. I never was one for accessory stuff. I felt they didn't last long. It used to go kind of bad and black really quickly but this one seems really good quality. It's from their kind of premium range but I think it's very beautiful, super affordable and just something really nice and dainty and I've been wearing it non stop since I got it. Finally for fashion I have this t-shirt that I'm wearing right now. It is this t-shirt that I got from Saint Laurent. It's a really plain white t-shirt and then it just has the Saint Laurent kind of written in a graffiti type form on the front and I really love it. I got inspired to get one of these t-shirts when I saw Victoria Beckham on the New York Fashion Week wearing that really crisp beautiful white t-shirt which everyone has been raving about and I really wanted to get that one but that doesn't seem to be out yet. It's from her summer range, so I will be definitely waiting for that one. But I wanted something inspired by that, a little bit of an oversized kind of classic fit straight t-shirt with like longer sleeves that you could roll up. And I think it's such a stylish piece. I have been wearing it with blazers, with more formal trousers, with jeans. I've honestly gotten so much wear out of it and I really love it. I love the length of the sleeves. It's kind of a really thin material, so it has a really nice fall, but at the same time, it's not see-through, which means it's quite good quality, um, and it looks quite kind of good. I hate t-shirts where you can literally see all your underwear seeing, coming through. Um, I really like the kind of print on the front. It's kind of simple and monochrome, so it goes with everything, but at the same time, it just makes it a little bit of more of a style statement. Um, and yeah, it looks really nice, kind of tucked it into trousers or into jeans with a blazer on top or kind of even with a jumper. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get loads of wear out of it. I really think it would look good with like a chunky knit cardi in winter as well. So we'll see how I style that up for winter. But yeah, I've really been loving this one and I think I will get loads of wear out of it. Okay guys, well that was everything from me for these monthly favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know what you've been loving through the month of September and I will see you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching, bye. Thank you.